Hello out there. I'm just uh, trying to share my experiences of, uh, I was doing a refresh memory on uh, code pipeline and code deploy. Uh, it had been a little bit of time since I worked with that and um, it's all coming back to me again. There's a really good uh, tutorial out there on Amazon's uh, website. Basically it's called creating a four stage pipeline. And ultimately what they end up doing is using Jenkins as a build step um, by in which uh, Jenkins will pull from your GitHub repository and then it'll go ahead and push the output of the Jenkins build step uh, as input to AWS code deploy, which is gonna go ahead and push the artifacts and the actual site over to a test instance. And basically um, what'll happen is after that, um, you'll get a uh, an approval request, which allows you to review it. And if you approve of it, it'll go ahead and deploy the application to a production instance. And what I mean by that, here I basically have three EC2 instances. So I have uh, EC2 instance, which is my code deploy test instance. And then I have a code deploy production instance. And then I got my Jenkins pipeline test. And that's an EC2 instance, which I've uh, provisioned, and it basically is hosting Jenkins here. So you can see this IP address right here, 3942155. Basically, that is what you see down here. So I'm actually logged into Jenkins. Um, so let me just kind of show you, this will make a little bit of sense. This is not intended to be a tutorial here. Um, ultimately, um, you know, I'm hoping that you'll go through the steps in this particular tutorial. So I'm just kind of showing you a summary in which you can expect um, and things of that nature. But I'm kind of working backwards here because it makes kind of sense. But here's code pipeline. And um, so AWS basically provides uh, code deploy and code pipeline as a part of your uh, CI CD continuous integration. Um, and the idea is uh, code deploy is an AWS service by in which you have a code deploy agent installed on your EC2 instance. And basically that is gonna be monitoring um, deployment requests that are coming from AWS. And the ultimate idea there is whenever the agent is notified of a new push to that instance, it's gonna go ahead and, and pull the artifacts from an S3 bucket and it's gonna deploy that onto your machine. Um, and so if you take a look here, what I've got and what you'll do if you go through the tutorial for the most part is I have a pipeline that has several different stages here. And basically what's happening is it's pulling all of the uh, changes from a GitHub repo. And if you take a look at the repo right here, it's, it's going to my master branch and basically um, you know, here's the repo. So it'll be watching the repo for any changes anytime you push something up there. Um, you know, this is the first step in the process is to pull the changes from that. And then the second one, the second stage, if you will, um, is going to cause Jenkins to, when it gets notified, um, you know, of pulling these changes, um, to the EC2 instance itself, um, Jenkins will be notified. And basically, if we take a look at this given stage, and this is an action inside of there, um, you can see um, this given action is pointing to a project called Jenkins Pipeline. And if I go to my Jenkins, you'll see that I have, this is basically a new, uh, uh, if you do a configure, here's your Jenkins project pipeline. And um, if we take a look at that, let's go into the configuration. It is basically uh, a process by which it's going to um, take its information from code pipeline. Um, so here's the build step right here. And it is going to actually run the rake command so it'll, it's actually gonna run the rate command on the, uh, on the EC2 instance that's hosting Jenkins. And when it's done doing the rake, and you'll see it's, it's all a part of the tutorial, but when it's done doing the rake command, it's gonna go ahead and push the output of that 
and publish it back to your code pipeline publisher, which ends up causing it to proceed to the very next stage, which is now it's time to deploy the doggone thing. So taking a look at um, Jenkins here, um, so what's what's going to happen is it's going to basically pull every minute for for changes right here, just so this is kind of like a cron job setup deal right here. Um, and we are using a couple of plugins. So we're using um, we have a rake plugin installed for Jenkins, and we also have the uh, code pipeline uh, plugin installed for Jenkins. So um, if you go ahead and take a look at that. And if we go back to here, Jenkins, we can go to manage Jenkins, take a look at your plugins. You can see what we have installed. So for this tutorial, we had to install this guy right here, the code pipeline one. And we also had to install the rake plugin right here too. So it just basically allows you to execute rake from within Jenkins. And then the code pipeline uh, plugin basically allows uh, Jenkins to communicate back and forth to code pipeline. And again, what how that's done is you give it the, uh, if we take a look at the pipeline right here, um, or the project, and we take a look at this, um, it basically happens when we uh, are using the uh, publish plugin. So we're actually running the build step right here for the, uh, let's see right there for the category. Um, so that's our build step. But anyways, when it's done, it's going to publish it back to code pipeline. So after that, it's going to go ahead and deploy that particular application to our test deployment group. And that is basically uh, code deploy. But if you take a look at your EC2 console, there's two instances that both have the code deploy agent installed in them. So here's our test instance and it's got its own IP address. So let's go ahead and take a look at this because I've already uh, run this a few times and I'll go ahead and show you in a little bit more detail about this. But if we go ahead and uh, just run index.html, here's the actual application that got deployed over to our test instance. Um, and that's what you've got going on here. Um, and then what happens is after it's deployed to your test instance, which is kind of cool, we actually have a manual approval step within code pipeline. And it's just yet another um, action that you can do right here. So, you know, it's, it's basically, let's take a look at this. What happens is we've got this wired up. Let me just do an edit. We've got the manual approval step um, wired up to uh, basically trigger an SNS notification, which sends an email to your uh, email address saying, hey, you know, there's an action waiting for your approval. Um, please go ahead and approve it. So, so here's the approval action. It, the provider itself is manual approval. And if you can see, there's many different types of providers um, for these and builds and sources. Um, but in this case, we got the manual approval one. Here's my uh, SNS topic, and basically this points to my email address. Um, this particular URL for review gets sent into your email, um, you know, saying, hey, please review this particular URL, and then any other optional comments that you want to have sent to you in email. Um, and so basically the pipeline is going to suspend until you approve of it. Once you approve of it, if you rejected it, the pipeline ends right there. But once you approve it, then it's gonna to proceed to the next step, which is gonna to be to deploy the application over to your production instance. Um, so taking a look at um, our code deploy, we have a couple of um, deployments that I have set up. We have a, a test application and a production application. And um, as a part of the, uh, code deploy, um, you actually have to set up uh, deployment groups. And, you know, correspondingly, I have a test deployment group set up as well as a production deployment group. And um, the deployment group is kind of um, not, it's similar to target groups when it comes to uh, EC2 load balancing, where you specify your target instances and stuff to include. Um, but your deployment group basically is where you specify 
certain criteria for your deployment itself. So as a part of the deployment group here, you can say, hey, um, which instances do I actually want to deploy the application to? Um, you know, and which role do I want to run it to? Um, you can do blue green as well. If you look here, um, again, you can you can add the option to do EC2 auto scaling groups. But if you look here, I'm saying deploy, this deployment group is going to send all of its deployments to EC2 instances. It doesn't have to be just one. It could be more than one. As long as they got the tag name set up here. So I have a tag name called code deploy test instance. And that name has to match the tag name that you set up when you run your EC2 instance or when you launch it, I should say. So, um, so that just basically means it's targeting this particular instance for this right here. Um, and then you have different deployment settings. So again, if you're doing blue green or if you have multiple instances, you can specify, do it all at once, one at a time, half at a time, things of that nature. Um, optional part here is pretty cool because I've actually got triggers set up. A trigger just basically says, hey, anytime a deployment occurred, um, these are the events. When these events occur, go ahead and send a notification to this trigger. And basically, it's an SNS trigger that points to my email. So I'll get emails, but you can specify SNS to go to other particular destinations as well. Um, so not just email. So I get emails whenever I run a deployment right here. Um, so that's basically the gist of uh, deployment groups. So I got a test application and a test deployment group, as well as a production application and a production deployment group. So another kind of cool thing that you can see is um, through your logs right here, um, you can see all of the individual deployments that have occurred. Um, you know, so you can take a look at this given deployment, and then you could take a look at the events. So you can see all of the different stages that occurred. Um, you know, the, the 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 code, shall we say, the code deploy um, hooks in the lifecycle, like the before install. So you could specify um, with your code deploy agents various things that you want to do on your EC2 instance before the install happens, while it's happening, after it installs, and then when the application is about to start. Um, and then when the service uh, is starting. So um, it allows you to customize and run different things, um, you know, where you could set up encryption, install certificates, all kinds of various things. So I won't actually uh, SSH into these instances, but I will say that when you launch these instances, um, you actually have, you will have a startup um, script that basically runs when you install. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. Okay, so basically when I launch the uh, instances for the, for the code deploy ones, um, you go ahead and put this in your advanced uh, um, advanced settings area. So it'll actually go ahead and, and run this um, uh, upon startup. And um, the key thing right here is you're installing the AWS CLI on the instance Ruby. Um, this given thing here is pulling the code deploy agent and you have to specify which region you're on. Um, and then you're actually just going ahead and running this given uh, install. So you're actually running the install part right here. And what that's going to do is that's going to actually install the agent on the EC2 instance. So again, that agent is always going to be monitoring and uh, being notified of any deployment pushes to your machine itself. So that's that's pretty critical right there. Um, and then with the Jenkins one, there's a, a similar startup there too, where you're basically um, installing the Jenkins software, the Java JDK, um, things of that nature, so that you can go ahead and log in and configure and start up your Jenkins server as well. So having said that, Let's go ahead and just run this pipeline. So I'm gonna go ahead and save these changes here and let's go and execute it. So right here, I've already run this before. I'm gonna do a release change, which means, you know, go ahead and run it again. So now if you take a look here, it's running the source one. So it's pulling everything down from the GitHub repo and it just finished that. And now that that's succeeded, it's going to the next step, which is, 
it's communicating to Jenkins right now, and it's it's running the build step, which is right here. And so the build step is basically taking the artifacts from GitHub that it gets, and it's um, right here from the code pipeline, and it's it's going to be running the rake command on it. And when it's done with that, it's going to take the output of rake and it's going to shove it through the code pipeline publisher, which ends up shoving it into this very next step, which is going to do the staging. So I am going to pause this while that works. Okay, so that build step just finished. That took a little bit of time. And now it's running the staging. So now it's actually deploying the application to our test EC2 instance. So it's actually communicating to the code deploy agent on that particular instance, and it's installing the latest and greatest change. So again, in a, in a real world situation, anytime you push changes up to your GitHub repo, um, this particular source stage will be alerted. It'll wake up and it'll start pulling the changes and shoving it right into this step. So now it looks like our staging set is done. So again, that's this particular URI, URL. So ultimately, you know, if I were to make a change to that particular uh, web page and push it back up into GitHub, you would see the new change here. So this is our test server. Now here's the really cool part. So now we're in the approval step. And if you look here, it says waiting for manual approval. So this is going to just sit and spin until um, you, until the person that you specified um, to receive the approval has actually said, Hey, I'm okay with it go ahead and deploy it to production. Until then, it's not gonna deploy it to production. So this is a situation where it, would, it might sit in this stage for quite a while while people are testing and looking at your uh, you know, QA server, if you will. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and open up the email that I got from this and show you what that looks like. So no offenses, I'd rather not show my actual email address. Um, I've kind of just boxed a little bit, but you can see these are the different emails that I get from uh, the SNS trigger notifications. But it, the interesting one to see is the very last one where it says approval needed AWS code pipeline Jenkins for action approval. So let me open that up. <clears throat> 